Hello, today we are going to see Vita Transponder in action. Let's start by defining what Vita Transponder is. By Vita Transponder, we, uh, we typically refer to a uh, virtualization of a, uh, an IP router uh, facility. Uh, in particular, I'm referring to an IP over the WDM uh, interface uh, or PLIM that can be controlled and managed somehow from uh, a, uh, an optical network uh, management system. So if we apply this to Cisco CRS1 and uh, Cisco ONS15454 MSTP, namely we can control the CRS1 IP over the WDM interfaces uh, from CTC, that is ONS15454 network craft terminal. With this, with this feature, we can now monitor the connection between the uh, CRS1 and uh, the, uh, the MSTP, the DWDM system. We can uh, retrieve uh, the, uh, uh, any alarms active on the interface and the performance monitoring, uh, like uh, the uh, receive optical power, the transmit optical power, the active alarms, the uh, G709 bytes, and so forth. And uh, most importantly, we can basically control the uh, layer one interface of the router as if it were a uh, transponder part of the pool, the transponder pool of the DWDM system. In other words, we can now create end-to-end -end circuits that are a layer one concept from, uh, directly from the PLIM of a CRS1 to the far end uh, PLIM of the remote CRS1. And this ex explains the reason of the name, virtual transponder, because uh, the, uh, the PLIM of a CRS1, either a 4 by 10 ITU card or the 40 giga ITU card, uh, is now managed by CTC in the very same way of a standard transponder. Virtual transponder was originally introduced in release 9.0. At that time, the required iOS XR release was 3.5. And... Uh, the uh, supported IP over the WDM interfaces were the 4 by 10 ITU and the 1 by 40 kick or 1 by OC768 dual binary. Vita transponder was extended in release 9.01, uh, mainly, mainly making uh, the feature more robust. And uh, this is the currently FCS Vita transponder um, release. The uh, DPSK plus 40 giga interface uh, on the CRS1 will be supported starting from ONS15454 release 9.1. It is currently, as we speak, in uh, the final system verification testing phase. Now, since actually this is a major redesign of the Vita transponder, still keeping the same concept behind, but making the configuration of the Vita transponder both on the 15454 and the CRS side uh, more sim uh, simpler, uh, the, uh, the uh, new NS release will be not backward compatible with uh, uh, any previous iOS XR release, but will require uh, release 3.9.0 at least. This is an overview of virtual transponder in action on an IP over the WDM network topology. As a reminder, by IP over the WDM, we mean uh, a uh, a network in which uh, the uh, the layer three and uh, represented by the router has a uh, a colored ITU colored interface that can be directly attached to a DWDM transport network without any need of any intermediate regeneration or OEO or transponder at the input and output of the uh, of the DWDM transport network. In this example, of course, we have a cloud of uh, IP. Uh, routers based uh, on CRS ones and the DWDM transport is represented by ONS15454 MSTP and this is managed by a, uh, a, a, a Netrocraft terminal, the CTC, Cisco Transport Controller. Uh, the, um, the picture should represent also the way in which uh, CTC is able to manage and control the different network element. CTC uh, use a proprietary core by interface from the network manager down to 
the single uh, MSTP network element in order to retrieve the information and set the working point of the different network elements. While the, uh, while the, uh, the network elements, uh, the, uh, the two adjacent uh, network elements uh, on the IP of the WDM connection, so the CRS ones, that is, uh, 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 that is interconnected to the DWDM cloud and uh, the, uh, or the MSTP node that it is uh, uh, terminating the, uh, the optical circuit and it is interconnected to the CRS, uh, is able to discover the adjacency to the, uh, to, to the uh, IP cloud by means of LMP, that is part of MPLS traffic engineering. In addition, the CTC is able to retrieve information uh, about the composition of the CRS ones on, by using the, an XML, a standard XML interface defined on the CRS one and uh, relying also on the, uh, on the iOS uh, XR CLI. So the idea is that uh, if we focus now on the two neighbors, the CRS one and, uh, and uh, the 15454 MSTP, there will be from an MPLS and LMP standpoint the two adhesion nodes where virtual transponder will, will basically partition or, uh, uh, or segment the router between uh, the layer one and layer zero layer and uh, the upper layers. So the idea is that now, having virtual transponder in action, we can basically control the layer one section of the, uh, of the router that is basically represented by, in iOS XR, by the controller, in, uh, the controller DWDM interface and uh, from the CTC standpoint, while the configuration of the upper layers, in particular the layer 3, will, be, will still be done using CLI. So what will be represented by CTC? We, we will, CTC will be able to represent uh, the, uh, the router on the, uh, on the network map, and so we will show the, uh, the router that has the LMP termination. In other words, if we have a, an IP cloud or an MPLS cloud, CTC will be able to discover only the CRS one that is attached to the DWDM network terminating the LMP, the LMP session. So in this example, we have eight routers, four on uh, side A and in node A and four in node Z. CTC will be able to discover the uh, only one CRS in A and one CRS in Z, the one attached to the DWDM network. CTC will completely show the uh, DWDM cloud that will be transparent, of course, we're talking about a, the network manager that is providing the, um, the management of the DWDM. And uh, not only will show the end-to-end -end circuit provision. This is uh, the network that we have put together in the lab it is actually representing a, uh, a network, uh, uh, an example of a network based uh, in South Africa, as uh, can be told by looking at the node names. And uh, from the network view of CTC, we can, uh, we can see the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the CRS one that appears on CTC in the very same way of any other MSTP node. If, for instance, this node, Kimberley, is a, uh, a uh, standard degree 2 RODM, while Bloemfontein is a degree 4 RODM, or optical cross-connect, while Bloemfontein Omni is a, uh, an optical terminal site, these two icon, the node called 1058.46.140 and 1058.46.139, are the two CRS that are discovered through LMP, by CTC. Now, differently from any other node, a, uh, a node that we are currently at the upper layer level uh, pro provided by CTC, if we double click on a node, like for instance Kimberly, we go to node level and we can discover the composition of, uh, of a node, the uh, CRS ones are non-clickable. Non In other words, if we try to double click on a CRS icon, we will get a warning saying that node management is not provided. Okay. So, how can we manage the CRS ones in this way? Well, first of all, we have an information that is related to their alarm status. Uh, the alarm status of a CRS one uh, will have basically the same meaning of any other MSTP node. So green means that basically no, no alarms are active. And uh, the management of the CRS one can be done by right-clicking 
on the uh, router icon. Of course, open node is equivalent to a double click and will again uh, pop up a warning. But we can now see other features, like for instance, uh, we can uh, show router port status and uh, CTC automatically discover for me the IP over the WDM interfaces that, that are available. So zero means uh, the, uh, it's a single shelf. Uh, both the CRS1 are eight slot uh, chassis and uh, so the first number will always be zero. The second number in the uh, port identifier is the slot. Port one is the second slot. And both the routers are configured in the very same way. We got a, uh, a 4 by 10 gig ITU interface in the second slot, it is slot number one. And uh, we have a uh, CP800 with four SPAs in uh, the third slot, so slot number two. And as you can see, we can just uh, CTC reports only the IP over the WDM capable PLIMs uh, available in the router. So I will not see the, uh, the uh, non DWDM capable interfaces or controllers in, uh, in the uh, CRS1. This can be seen by directly connecting to a CRS1. For instance, if uh, we now turn it into the same element, If we now see the, uh, the composition of the nodes, we can see that uh, slot one, that is the second slot, we have the, uh, well, this is the MSC on the back plane, and the plim is the 4 by 10 gigi. While in the second slot, 0 to 0, we have uh, the, a, well, 1 by 10 gigi, it's actually a SPA, that is part of a, uh, is part of a SIP 800 module. So, this CRS one, that is uh, uh, the one with the IP address 10584613939, has uh, two plims. One is slot number one and one is slot number two. But only this, the one in slot number one is uh, a, an IP of the WDM interface. And this is automatically discovered by CTC that basically presents me only the uh, controllable interfaces. And so if I go on... Uh, on this interface, for instance, I have the information related to this interface. I have the status of the controller, information related to the G709 status, the previous alarms, the history of the alarms, the current alarms, we don't have any alarms, information about the uh, OTU2 TTI, the trail trace identifier, and then I have information about uh, the wavelength, 1542.14 nanometers, the transmit power, 4.5 dBm, and the receive power, that is minus 15 dBm. This is exactly the same information I could get. I could get uh, from the CLI, providing the command show controller DWDM 0. As we can see, this is exactly the same the same interface of course the reading is, is uh, was done in a different moment and uh, but the power is consistent uh, and the equivalent is the same of course so when we right click and show the port status in this way the CTC connects to the uh, to the plim that was discovered using the uh, XML interface and retrieve the information of the, uh, of the interface directly from CTC. So no need to know uh, CLI commands. Of course, I can retrieve uh, all the available interfaces, like, for instance, the second interface, the second port inside the 4 by 10 is in, in status administrative down. And, and uh, in fact, the Rx power is minus 43. It's not receiving any power because there is no circuit uh, connected to that port. Now, let's see. I mean, we're not going to see the configuration of virtual transponder because it's not part of the, uh, of the goal of this, uh, uh, this, this video that should, should be a, a short one. 
Um, you can get in touch with me and I will provide you a configuration guide that I wrote if you are interested in, in the configuration. But I, will, I want to provide you some information about at least the concept of the transponder. So if you double click in Cape Town, the TSD, MSTP node adjacent to the CRS one. And we go into provisioning communication channels. We have the LMP section. As we can see, LMP is enabled on this node, and uh, we have a control channel that is unlocked, meaning in service, and it is uh, communicating with the a remote node that is exactly our CRS one, 10584639. So basically the idea is that we need, uh, in order to uh, set up the virtual transponder, we need to enable LMP on the uh, 15454 side. We will need to enable LMP of course, using a different, uh, uh, not using, of course, a graphical user interface like CTC, but using the CLI. And once LMP will be enabled, both on the CTC side, on the NS side, and both on the and the uh, CRS side, the uh, the, uh, the the adjacency will be automatically discovered, and the CRS one will appear in the uh, in in CTC. We can see that we have a traffic engineer link that is up. The data link is up and free. And this is basically, the data link uh, is actually represented graphically by this link. Now, I want to uh, sh basically underline the difference between um, this link, shown in green here, and this link. This is a DWDM link that is carrying a, uh, a, uh, a DWDM pattern. So, for instance, 40 channels. And uh, the icon is different from this one. And there is a reason for that, because this link comes from a manual configuration. In this case, we have manually configured the LMP to describe how the CRS1 is connected to the DWDM uh, link. We need to provide information about the port, the physical port to which we are connecting, meaning the wavelength that we are going to use on the CRS1. And this basically is described by this icon. While this is uh, as a different icon, that uh, means that uh, the link has been automatically discovered by the OSC. Now, once the uh, CRS1 are discovered by CTC, and this is actually a result of the configuration of the transponder, we can also we can also create circuits uh, among them. And uh, the reason why the CRS1 is uh, is green is because we have already a circuit that is up and running and uh, it is currently selected. This is the name we gave to the circuit, and this is the, the wavelength that is in use, 1542.14. If we double click on, the, on this circuit, this circuit is treated in the very same way. CTC would manage a, uh, a, uh, a transponder-based circuit. There you go. Double clicking on the circuit, uh, pop up the, uh, the circuit window where we can see the source, that is the CRS one, getting in in Cape Town, Omni, passing through Cape Town, Omni, Cape Town, getting in from direction D, exiting direction C, and going to Bloemfontein, and then going to Bloemfontein, Bloemfontein Omni, and it is terminated on the far end. As any other circuit, we have a detailed map that is showing exactly all the network elements in the middle. Okay, this is more complex, but it is, it is very useful when we want to do troubleshooting of a circuit, for instance, due to after a fiber cut or a, a failure, for instance. Now, since actually this is, uh, from CTC standpoint, a... Uh, equivalent to any other circuit. We can treat this circuit in the very same way. So we can delete the circuit, we can set, put the service out of service. So here, for instance, I can decide to put the service in a disabled state, that would mean uh, out of service. Or we can delete it. Now, this circuit is going through a what we call an omnidirectional architecture. So Bloemfontein, together with Bloemfontein Omni, build what we call an omnidirectional adrop. This is an omnidirectional degree-free optical cross-connect, and the same is Cape Town. So we have complete flexibility to change the routing of this IP of the WDM circuit. So to do that, let's start by deleting this circuit. To delete the circuit, we select the circuit and click Delete. 
can put the port in administrative down state, meaning we shut off the controllers. And then it's a matter of uh, time and uh, the system will delete the circuit. Now, deleting a circuit end-to-end uh, -end, uh, means that we are completing uh, shutting, shutting down the, uh, uh, the pipe that is interconnecting the two interfaces. We shut off all the intermediate VOAs and therefore the power received by the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the interface uh, will be very low. Okay? And this is actually represented. This CRS one is already has already changed its color from green to yellow. If we now right click on this CRS one, we can see that the show active alarms uh, choice has become active, so it can be selected. If we select it, we will see that uh, I'm expecting this interface to show a uh, a loss. In fact, we can see that the DWDM interface zero one zero zero is raising a loss. And now also the second CRS one is uh, showing an active alarm and uh, again it is a loss on interface 0100. In fact, if we now right click on the node and show the controller status, we will see that uh, the detected alarm is lost and the accepted alarm is lost. In fact, the Rx power, the power received by the interface, is minus 44, minus 45 dpm. And this is consistent with the fact that we have deleted the circuit between the two CRS ones. Of course, if we do the same here on the shell of the first CRS one, we can see that the uh, detected and, and uh, asserted alarm is the loss of signal and uh, the uh, received power is minus 44.9 dBm. Okay. So we can see that uh, CTC is able to uh, synchronize with the CRS one and raise the, uh, the alarm on the interfaces on which we have activated and configured the transponder. So how can we create a circuit uh, uh, between the two CRS ones. Well, we can follow the, uh, the, uh, the standard approach, clicking on create, or we can right click on the CRS one and we can choose provision circuit to the other far end. So we are currently on uh, 139, identified as self by CTC. We want to provision a circuit to the far end that is uh, uh, the CRS one 140. This automatically pop up the uh, circuit creation wizard. Now, definitely we need to choose an, an optical channel circuit, but which one? We need to choose the OCH trail, because again, the uh, VITO transponder is transforming the PLIM, that is actually a line card, into a, uh, virtually, into a, 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 an MSTP line card. So, uh, exactly in the very same way in which we would create an OCH trail between uh, for instance, uh, MSTP gigi corresponders or MSTP ADM 10 gig units, we now can create an OCH trail between the line cards of the CRS one. The CRS one, from the line card standpoint, from the PLIM standpoint, PLIM is the line card of the CRS one, becomes a part of the DWDM cloud virtually. So we choose OCH trail and uh, we can give a name to this uh, circuit. I P over DWDM example. We uh, need to choose, of course, the right uh, color and uh, or wavelength uh, that is uh, the wavelength uh, of the port, the physical port, the physical filter port on the DWDM side where we have connected the, the IP router. In this case, we chose to connect it to, to uh, wavelength 1542.14. We set the port in unlocked state. These are the, uh, the router's port. Clicking next, the system automatically know the start point because we right click it on the start point and uh, recognize PLIM uh, in slot number zero. In, in, sorry, in slot number one, port number zero. The far end is automatically 
identified in the very same way. At this point, we can define the way in which we want to control the uh, controller of the, uh, of the router. As I was saying before, this is exactly as if it were virtually a transponder of the 454. So I, I have the same flexibility I have on a transponder of the 454. I can decide to enable, well, I mean, the G709 on, on, the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the CRS one is always enabled, but I can choose what type of FEC I want. I can disable FEC. I can choose standard FEC to provide the best interworking with the you know, third-party, for instance, interfaces, or I can choose Enhanced FEC, that is the default one for the CRS one. We can leave Enhanced. I can set the signal degrade uh, bit error rate. This is actually the bit error rate uh, after which the threshold crossing will raise a signal degrade alarm. When we click Next, we see the automatic routing. Let, let's maximize the window. You can see that the system is automatically able to find out using OSPF the shortest path. This is uh, easily the shortest path. It's one, two, three, four, five spans. But again, remember that this is actually a non-directional circuit, so I can choose where I want to route my, my service. For instance, what if I wanted to go through Kimberley? Very simple. I click on Kimberley, I click Include, and uh, I click then Apply to verify that the wavelength is available on that path. Yes, it is. So now the, uh, the new path will go through Kimberley. When I click Finish, CTC, exactly in the very same way of any other MSTP circuit, will transform this circuit provisioning into low-level commands to the CRS ones and all the intermediate 15454s. In time, also the, uh, the alarms on the CRS one will clear, but if we now go and see the, uh, the, the circuit, we can see that the circuit, okay, the alarms have already cleared. The circuit is uh, discovered and it is unlocked, meaning that the circuit is up in service. In fact, now if we right click on the node and we show the router port status, we can see that the controller state is up. This is the history. We can now clear the history. But uh, most importantly, we can see that the detected alarm is none, the accepted alarm is none. Now we have uh, also power on the receive side, minus 15.5. And uh, you can also see that there is a TTI. In the TTI field, uh, we have uh, part of the name of the circuit, we, part of the name that we gave to the circuit, the IP over the WDM example. So CTC has written this information into the TTI to identify this circuit through the CTC. This feature is going to change in the next release. And uh, the circuit is up and, up and running. The same on, uh, on, uh, on the other CRS one. As we can see, the received power is minus 14.65. The TTI field is written. We can see the, the prefect bit error rate is uh, 9 minus 11. We can see also the Q and the Q margins. Perfect. And again, the system automatically cleared the alarms. So, which means that CTC is able to synchronize with the CRS one and retrieve the, and update on CTC graphically the, uh, the alarm status. To summarize, in this short video, we've seen uh, how, to, how virtual transponder can be used uh, to provide uh, a way, for instance, to a transport department to control the layer one interfaces on an IP router. With virtual transponder, we, we are able to see and, uh, and control the alarm status of the CRS ones. We were able to control the layer one information of the uh, IP router, like the receive optical power, the transmit optical power, uh, the uh, prefect bit error rate, the Q margins, the wavelength set on the, on the wavelength, and uh, not only this, but we were also able to control circuit creation, meaning that we could delete the circuit and recreate the circuit on a different path. And this basically provides a way to control the, um, the la layer one provisioning of the connectivity among routers to a, a directly from the transport uh, uh, network manager. In case of questions or comments, do not hesitate to contact me at the email address you see.